everyone and welcome to Good Success in English. My name is Benjamin and in today's video we shall be talking about units of English grammar. That's the topic for today's lesson. Let's get started. Units of English grammar. That's exactly the lesson for today. And let's look at the key points. First of all, the purpose of this lesson is to give you a picture of the English structure. English has a structure, a, just like a house is a structure, you know, and the structure is made up of different parts or different units. And we, that's exactly what we want to look at. With this structure constantly placed before your mind's eye, you will find it naturally easy to understand how all the parts of English combine to form the English structure. Yes, this is what I want to show you in this lesson. Please, let's continue. The word structure refers to the way in which the parts of something are connected arranged or organized. You see, like I gave the example of a house, a house has, uh, you know, different parts. You have the roof, you have the walls, you have the ground floor, you have the windows, you have the doors, you have the ceiling board. Different parts are arranged together to form a complete house. Like every other language, English has its basic structures. Let's look at these structures. Each of these structures is made up of parts that are systematically arranged. Take note of systematically arranged, and we are going to look at it. I want you to get the clear picture, and that will uh, help you, that will facilitate your understanding of the English grammar. Sentences are made up of clauses. And take note of that. The sentence is the largest unit of grammar, and it is within it is with the sentences we communicate and express our thoughts and convey our meanings. So sentences are made up of clauses. So clauses are units that make up uh, sentences. Then clauses consist of phrases, which means a clause is made up of uh, phrases, you know. It can be two or more phrases. And phrases are made up of words, you know. Words consist of morphemes. Of course, when we talk of morphemes, morphemes are the smallest indivisible unit of grammar that sets meaning apart. We are going to look at mean, uh, morphemes. Morphemes can be called word parts. I mean, when uh, we, the study of morphology, I, I, morphology is the study of how words are formed in English. And of course, from, from morpheme, we have the word morphology. Now, these are known as the grammatical units of English. Now let's take a look at the grammatical units, the English grammatical units at a glance. Just looking at it, let's, let me give you a clear picture of it. You have the sentence at the apex, followed by the clause, downwards followed by the phrase, then by the word, and finally by the morphine. So in this case, if we if we look at it from the descending order, a sentence is made up of clauses, a clause is made up of phrases, a phrase is made up of words, and a word is made up of morphemes. If we take the ascending order, morphemes combine to form a word, words combine to form a phrase, phrases combine to form a clause, and clauses combine to form a sentence. Now let's go further. As we have seen above, the sentence occupies the highest position among the grammatical units. That we have seen clearly. 
all the other units combine and function within the sentence structure. That's true. Morphemes are combined to form a word, words are combined to form a phrase, phrases are combined to form a clause, clauses are combined to form a sentence. Of course, a sentence stands on its own as the communicative unit, as the unit with which we communicate our ideas. Uh, when we want to uh, send a message to someone, we have to convey this message in sentences. Now, let's look at these units one by one and how they combine to form the sentence. How do we do this? We are going to illustrate the above units using the following sentence. The obedient boys were working in the garden, but their disobedient brothers were playing in the field. Of course, we, we can change uh, the word bet, uh, but into uh, a, con a, a, a con uh, that is a, a conjunction, you know, that, and then we turn that into, uh, into a complex sentence. Let's try to do that quickly. Yes. So, in the previous sentence, it was a compound sentence when we said the obedient boys were working in the garden, but their disobedient brothers were playing in the field. That was a compound sentence. But now we are changing it into a complex sentence. A complex sentence is a sentence that contains one main clause and at least one subordinate clause, while a compound sentence is a sentence that contains two main clauses. Now let's look at the complex sentence. And then let's look at uh, the, how other units of grammar combine uh, to form this sentence. In terms of morphemes, the following are morphemes. I earlier told you that morphemes are word parts. D is a morpheme obedient. Boy, S is a morpheme that combines with boy to form the plural boys. Where, work, then we have ing. ing is a morpheme, work is a, 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 a morpheme, the two combine to form a word working. In, the, garden, while, these ones that are not broken are indivisible. There, this obedient, this is, a, that is D-I-S, is a morpheme, is a prefix that combines with obedient to form a new word disobedient. So this is a morpheme and obedient is a morpheme. Then brother is a morpheme, S is a morpheme. This morpheme S, which is called the plural morpheme, combines with brother to form brothers. Then we have where, play, then ing, play is a morpheme, ing is a morpheme, combining to form the word playing. In is a morpheme, is a preposition, you can't divide it further. D is a definite article, you can't divide it further. And field is a word, you can't divide further. So all together, we have 22 morphemes that make up the entire sentence. Then let's look at the words, uh, how many words we have that combine to make the entire sentence. We have the word uh, be, obedient, boys, we're working in the garden while they're disobedient, brothers, we're playing in the field. We have 17 words that make up the entire sentence. So you can see that 22 morphemes combine to form the 17 words that we have in that sentence. Now, let's look at the phrase. 
The disobedient boys, that is a noun phrase. We are working, that is the verb phrase. In the garden, that is a prepositional phrase. While is a subordinating conjunction. You know, a subordinating conjunction is a conjunction that begins a subordinate clause. And so, while, while they are disobedient brothers we are playing uh, i mean uh, i mean while is a different it, it, it's a different it can stand as a phrase on its own then they are disobedient brothers is uh, a noun clause i mean a noun phrase please a clause has a finite unit but this one doesn't have any verb within it they are disobedient brothers. That's a noun phrase. We are playing a verb phrase. In the field, another prepositional phrase. So we have six phrases here combining to form the entire sentence. And then let's look at the clauses. The disobedient boys who are working in the garden. That is the main clause. What we call the independent clause independent in the sense that it can stand in its own and as we put full stop here it can function as a simple sentence it has complete meaning while there are disobedient brothers we are playing in the field this is a subordinate clause it's called a dependent clause because it cannot stand on its own it must depend on this main clause to convey its meaning and then this, the kind of subordinate clause is this, uh, it, it is actually uh, an adverbial clause of time. Because if we say the obedient boys were working in the garden, a question may arise, when, when were they working in the garden? At the same time that their disobedient brothers were playing in the field. So while they are disobedient brothers who are playing in the field, is an adverbial clause of time. And here we have two clauses making up the entire sentence. And the sentence, again, we can see it here. The obedient boys were working in the garden while their disobedient brothers were playing in the field. That's one single sentence. And we have seen uh, how the various grammatical units combined together to form the entire sentence structure. And so let's look at summing up. As you must have noticed, a sentence is not just any group of words. It is not simply a combination of words. The words are combined systematically to form higher units, which combine to form the next higher units until the highest unit is reached that is a sentence is formed so we have gone through it and we have seen exactly uh, how these play out and this has shown us a clear picture of the structure of the english language in the above sentence 22 morphemes combined to form 17 words these 17 words combined to form six phrases the six phrases combined to form uh, in turn combined to form two clauses and these two clauses ultimately uh, formed one sentence that we have seen now at this point I want you to know that the topic of today's video has been taken from a complete ebook entitled good success in English it is a very important uh, book in English published on Amazon.com. And so, if you want to buy the complete ebook, you can uh, follow this link that I have pasted. There are two links here one taking you to the author page, the other to the bookshelf. And whichever one you copy and paste in any browser, say the Google. Of course, it will take you directly to uh, Amazon.com, and there you can buy uh, a copy of the book. 
Now, if you are here in Nigeria and you want to get a copy of the book directly from me, you can write me via this email address, benjamininfo33 at gmail.com. Benjamininfo, I-N-F-O, 3333 at gmail.com. Once you write me requesting for a copy of Good Success in English, I will send you a copy right away into your email box. And then you can download it into your laptop, into your iPad, or into your handset, or any other electronic device you may be using. And once you download it, it is for your perusal and continuous benefit. Or you only have to pay a token of 1,000 naira, so it's cheaper if you are here in Nigeria. You can request for your own copy just by writing me via this email address, and I will advise you on how to make the transfer, and then you, I will send you the quick, the, the, your own copy right away. This is where we draw the cutting in today's video. I just want to thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel because when you register your presence by subscribing, uh, what happens is that as soon as a new video is uploaded, you will receive uh, immediate notification, especially if you are preparing for any of your English exams or you are really interested in learning how to speak and write English correctly. Of course, this, this series of videos that are being regularly uploaded on this channel will be of great help to you. Please, I want to thank you. I want to wish you well. And at this point, I want to say, please stay safe and keep learning. Learning never stops. Because the day you stop learning is the day you start dying intellectually. Please remain blessed and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.